Good evening, everyone. I want to call the meeting to order. This is the select board meeting of August 27th, 2018. We are being reported by CCTV. Uh, Jane Hodgkiss, uh, select board member, is not present tonight. She called me about 5.30 saying that uh, she was ill and unable to make it. Um, but uh, we do have a consent agenda. We also do have a quorum, so that's important. Uh, the consent agenda, the town accountant warrant, uh, minutes, gift acceptance of White Pond Associates, Inc. Uh, the minutes were of June 4th. Uh, White Pond Associates, Inc., $2,000 to the White Pond Management Plan gift account. And Sunday entertainment licenses, Concord Players for November 11th, February 17th of 2019, April 28th of 2019, and May 5th of 2019, 51 Walden Street Theater. Uh, we also have, I guess we need to get approval of that. Okay, we'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Thank you. And now we also have executive session minutes of August 13th of 2018. We have a motion to accept those. Move to approve the executive session minutes of August 13th, 2018, not to be released. Second. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Town manager report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Uh, construction will start on the Cambridge Turnpike project next week after, after Labor Day, uh, starting with the utility installation. Phase one is the area from Lexington Road to the Mill Brook, uh, and phase two will, will be out towards Crosby's Corner. So there will be some construction activity happening on the Cambridge Turnpike in the next week. Uh, Kaiser Road parking lot is, uh, is under construction. The west side is, has now been milled uh, and is being graded and will be paved this week, binder course. Um, the work that we were hoping to get the work on the east side, close to the Millbrook, done um, before Labor Day, but it looks like it's going to be an after Labor Day, so we have to have that done by the end of the day. Road. Um, continuing to get complaints about Verizon service, um, but I understand they are coming in on the uh, on September 24th to talk about potential uh, other uh, other options for service because we are we really are experiencing some poor quality. Uh, Ag Day is this uh, excuse me a week from Saturday, uh, September 8th, 10 a.m. The 13th annual Ag Day at the Farmers Market on Main Street. Main Street will be closed as it usually is. Um, the Giroux land planning process tomorrow night at 5.30 on the site at 369 Commonwealth Avenue. Um, the Direct Department staff, Assistant Town Manager, and consultants will be there to um, discuss and hear from the public ideas on how they would like to see the um, Giroux land integrated into the town's park system and, and integrated into the existing conservation land that's there. It's supposed to be hot tomorrow, so um, if, if it is too hot to go out uh, tomorrow, they're, they're still going ahead with it, but there'll be a second opportunity on September 17th in the evening uh, in the town, so it won't be your only chance. Uh, state primary election is uh, Tuesday, uh, September 4th. The polls will open at uh, 7, close at 8. Absentee ballots are available at the town clerk's office uh, until Friday, uh, August 31st. That's an extended date due to the holiday, the Monday holiday. So until Friday, August 31st, when it submit the absentee ballot. Uh, there is a heat advisory that has been issued by the National Weather Service, so we've encouraged anybody that has concerns about excessive heat to visit the public libraries or uh, have a deal with the summer to get some relief. Um, and they're expecting a possible peak electric uh, demand day tomorrow around uh, 4 o'clock, so people are asked at, at that time in the late afternoon on Tuesday to uh, reduce consumption if it's at all possible to lower our peak. Um, and a reminder that ne the Negro Pond is shut down and will be for the foreseeable future to avoid tripping the waiver on this piece of the surface water supply. So we're uh, relying on our groundwater wells and there is a state of um, water supply conservation uh, voted by the Public Works Commission on July 29th. So it's still once a week water. Even though we've had some rain that's helped us, folks are asked to uh, limit their recovery water to one day a week. And that one day is the day it's that the day they leave trash collection. Yeah, that their, their neighborhood is served by the town's trash collection, which they don't necessarily subscribe to the trash collection. Uh, Sudbury has let us know that they um, are intending to sell uh, 48 acres of land that they acquired uh, with the 
use this property that's on Route 117, uh, 36 acres, and 16 of those acres are in concrete. So there's a, a potential significant development on Route 117 in the subway that you get hit by an eye by the Hockey Alps property. Uh, and the selectmen can just upgrade it in that subway is exactly in that position. And uh, lastly, the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day is September 19th. Here in Concord, uh, we have a monthly in Lexington, uh, but the one in Concord is the most popular one. So it's uh, 4 p.m. on uh, September 19th, household hesitates. Prescription drugs, though, can always be dropped off at the police station. The police station. There is a receptacle that gets uh, emptied on a regular basis. And... Any questions or comments? Move to the chair's report. Uh, I want to update everyone regarding the status of the issue involving uh, the nuisance dog Blue uh, and the failure of the occupants of 15 Chase Road to comply with the condition of the select board order dated February 12th of 2018. And what seemed to be a reasonable resolution to a long existing neighborhood problem um, has still not been resolved. And it became necessary for the town to file a civil complaint in the Concord District Court. Um, the defendants have filed a response, uh, and I had anticipated it was going to be necessary to hold a hearing in the court. Uh, however, at about 4.30 this afternoon, I received an email with some photographs showing that perhaps the offense has been completed. Uh, and so we're going to need to get the, somebody from the police department to go do an inspection. If it passes, we will be dismissing the complaint and hopefully the problem will uh, have resolved itself. There hasn't been any continuing problem regarding uh, behavior of the dog, but part of the order was uh, the fencing. <coughs> uh, the town always would like to have disputes settled by working out an agreement with an opposing party or parties. Uh, such agreements are usually less expensive and each party accomplishes partial victory, but it's not always possible as any agreement requires both parties to compromise. At the special town meeting on October 1st, there's been a warrant to accept an agreement with W.R. Graves involving funds for the taking of their property by eminent domain. The town earlier this year resolved the lawsuit involving the town of Acton regarding Nagog Pond. The town currently is involved in a lawsuit involving access to Estabrook Woods. Concord's fortunate to have excellent counsel in all these matters, but competent counsel comes at a cost. There will also be a warrant article regarding additional funding for the town's legal expenses. Uh, I urge the town voters to become educated regarding the warrant article and to attend the special town meeting. I also urge you to spend some time to learn about the candidates running for elective office and to vote on September 4th. There are a number of contested races this year. We're fortunate to be able to select who will represent us in the various offices. And with that, we will move to the uh, public hearing. I will accept the motion. To Sure, move to open the public hearing, and this is to discuss the change of the alternate manager of paparazzi of Concord, um, located at 766 Elm Street. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Please come forward, and <clears throat> you would identify yourself, but, uh, tell us a little bit about what your plans are. Okay. Um, my name is Eric Sheehan. I went to Paparazzi Concord since 2011. Um, originally from Gardner, I grew up in Foxborough. Um, basically, we are in need of an you know, alternate manager of Paparazzi. I intend to stay there for quite a long time. I could go in any time very well. And I know that there's been a quarry check and a safe serve alcohol training certificate you've gone through. Uh, there's also corporate li uh, liquor service policy that I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah, of course. And the Concord Police have uh, completed a check and determined that uh, there's nothing that would disqualify you from uh, Any members have any questions? 
Where were you before you went to Buffalo Angel? Um, I started working there when I was still in college at McGill University. Oh, so cool. when I graduated from college, I went into first full time serving and then worked my way up to manager. Um, before then, I worked at Cantu Ataro in Sudbury while I was still in college. And have you been working in the concrete locations since 2011 or worked in the Yeah, I worked at the Framingham and the Wellesley locations for like short periods of time, but I've been in concrete for the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Terrific, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, does anybody in the public have any questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, I don't know. Um, I can move to close the public hearing. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, do we have any other discussion? It seems like a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Experience. And, uh, At least I checked it out. <laughs> exactly. uh, we saw his passport and everything. So, I see uh, no reason okay. to. Delve any further? Then I'm ready to make a motion. Very good. Move to approve Eric Andrew Sheen as alternate manager of record for Paparazzi and Factory of Concord doing business as Paparazzi located at 768 Elm Street. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Good Congratulations. Luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming out. We now have uh, the potential Main Street Historic District expansion. Mark. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Mark Gibbons, Four Seventy Four Barrisville Road, meeting with Neil Glenn, who's our chairman of the Historic District Commission in town. Basically, we are here to um, outline for you what our intent is to expand the Main Street Historic District. Um, you know, it's in our goal for quite some time to make sure that we have done everything we can to preserve the historic Main Street Concert. That's by a lot of charge, okay? And although the um, demolition bylaw is very effective to a certain degree, it's not a solution, particularly as we discovered last year. We were also uh, pleased with the reaction that we got at town meeting last year when we were able to incorporate that one more into the history district. What I'd like to show you this evening is a presentation that our senior planner, Heather Bill, has done a terrific job on this. She really helped us last year put together the saving of the house on Central Road, and you know, she really has a, a flair for this and a good education with it, so she's been terrific at it. So, so um, we have the presentation on file, and I'd kind of like to go through it if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. And what I want to start with, maybe if that's okay, is the back end of it, the last page, which shows us a map. And basically what we're looking to do is expand the Main Street Historic District, okay, um, to incorporate, the first start up, maybe you already have copies. Yeah. You know. um, I didn't make copies for everybody because I think it's more effective yeah. to show it to you rather than let you get ahead of me, okay. Um, you know, it, it's some structures on Sudbury Road that really need to be, you know, incorporated into the district, okay? And although, as I said earlier, the demolition delay bylaw can be effective, it isn't a solution, okay? And if you looked at it, we wanted to um, incorporate an area without being too aggressive about how we did it, because we thought if we could uh, pick off the right spots, okay? And our intent is, as you'll see, is to sort of lay this out to the people who live in those homes and ask them what their opinion is. Okay. And we made no uh, predisposition about how to go forward after that. If they come back and say, well, we're trying to out, we don't like this, then, you know, then all bets are off. Okay, maybe. Okay, so. Just for your information, we have been provided a copy of the letter, the list of the addresses that were identified, and the frequently asked questions. So right. that's been very helpful. Okay. And that, that's pretty much what I was going to show you. Right, Something but I, I think for the public, yeah. it's helpful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If Andy can get our act together. Yeah, it's on the screen. It's very good. Thank you. Oh, okay. So we can't do it. Well, I have the presentation. You can certainly look at it from my perspective. Okay. 
Give a copy of the map, yeah. okay? And what it shows is how we intend to expand. Now, one of the things that the committee actually marshal rescues is. Oh, thank you. Great, thank you. When, when we showed this to Marshall Rasmussen, she actually indicated that perhaps we should incorporate the Emerson Umbrella Building into it as well. I, I haven't, you know, I think we can certainly do that. That's town owned, so, you know, but we certainly, you know, I'd like your input on that. Okay. And the, obviously, the key to this is that the map shows the different ages. You know, a couple of those homes on Sudbury Road, as you know, are very old. Okay. So what we're looking to do is expand the district from Main Street, which is the, the green up above. That's our and incorporate those homes in here. Okay. So if you go to the page that shows all the homes, I don't think. Oh, that, that's it. I don't know if you can read that. It's a little noisy, but what that does is that basically shows all the homes we're talking about. Okay, and you know the date of their structures. Okay, and so what our intention is is okay. Let's go to page one. Is on. No, page one. Page one. Page one. Yeah. Page one. Uh, no, there's a page one. That's that that comes out under the signature that we expect to send out on September 10th with your approval, obviously, um, to all of those homeowners, outlining what our intention is, give a little bit of a description about what our charges are and why we think it's a, you know, a good thing for them to participate in, if you will. Okay. So there's two pages to that, solid idea, okay, which sort of explains what we're trying to accomplish. And then along with that, next page, there is sort of some frequently asked questions about the historic district, which sort of, you know, reiterates what our charge is and all that stuff, okay, and then keep going. And then along with it, there is a survey that we're going to send out that asks them questions about whether they like to participate in it or not, okay, what their thoughts are, and trying to get some input in, and whether they would be willing to, you know, our next step would be to have an open forum probably at the library sometime in October, if we get good responses from them. If we don't get good responses from this, all bets are off, okay, so, uh, does that make sense? Now, all, she has also set up a website already that is key to this, so people can go to the website and see what we're doing, or answer these questions on the website as well. So it's our intention to send this out by that belated, the, the letter is dated the 10th of September, which you probably saw. Hopefully get some responses back by the 29th, and back the responses back by the 29th of September, I think so we're going to get on that date. Then we have some sort of a public meeting in October to get some input further, okay? Because as you know, if we're going to do this, we have to have um, the Warren article written and then go on like January 4th or something like that. So does that all make sense? So that's our plan, okay? And we obviously didn't want to do anything without the select board, you know, sort of buying into it, if you will, and we welcome your comments. I'd like your comments about it and the sort of if you think that should be incorporated. I haven't looked at the structure, the data and stuff to see if it should be, okay? Um, my concern with that is if we include that, then does that tell people to live across the street maybe that they are susceptible to being incorporated? You know, one of the things that we have to be careful about is that we don't want to have people feel like we're forcing them to not be able to do what they want to do with their own homes. We're firm believers in that, okay? Um, and, you know, that's a concern. Okay. That's my story. Uh, so I think I, I appreciate the approach you're taking here. I think it's good to get the input of the public. Uh, I'm a little unsure as to what const how many houses are affected by this. Do you remember well, how many are on the list? I don't oh, know. Well, I, I don't know. It's probably, I didn't count them. 30, 25 or so, or something like that, in my guess. So what you said was if folks aren't interested in it, then it's kind of a non-starter. I, I think we need to see what kind of input we get back from. Okay, I don't want to 
go to that point and say, well, if we get 50%, then we'll go forward with it. You know, I mean, well, that's what I, I think we need to see what the reaction is. I think that's fine. I would just say it a little differently because what you said was if we don't get positive input or something that will affect, it's a non starter I think. Right. Better language is we're going to hear from the neighbors, and after we've heard from the neighbors and the public, then we'll be making hopefully a, a good decision. Because uh, I don't want to get a lot of politicians. No, no, I just don't <laughs> want it to be what that, that is, ten but, people but, but said was right, not that, a good idea. You, you, and so you're right, right. That is that is our intent. Okay, we want to see what kind of a reaction we get. Okay. And, um, so just yeah. because we're record, being recorded and people may be listening to it, right. so what? If I'm a homeowner in this area, what is the major impact a decision like this would have on my abilities outside of the demolition? Delay bylaw. Okay. Bylaw. You, you, know, you know what our charter is. Our charter is to um, approve certificates of appropriateness for any changes that are visible from the public way. Okay. So basically, if somebody wants to put an addition on, or they want to change the color of their homes and things like that, then they have to come before us and file an application. It's a public hearing where they explain what they want to do. The public gets an, a chance to comment on it, and we move forward. Okay. okay. I mean, um, you know, we're fairly comfortable with our process. Okay. Um, so, if the library was part of the historic district. Would they be able to do their expansion? The library is part of the historic district and they have come okay. before us to get approval for their expansion. Okay. So there's some flexibility in terms of modernizing, if you want. Oh, yeah, no, it, it isn't, it, there's no question about it that it isn't our intent that everything really has to look like a 1750 house, not at all. Okay. And, you know, and if I could give an example, the museum, the new barn at the museum is a modern building. The science building at uh, Concord Academy is a very modern building. So, just because it's in a historic district doesn't mean you can't have a modern building. It's just that, you know, it needs to be reviewed and be tasteful and appropriate for the, the neighborhood. In the streetscape, the streetscape is the very important. Although, I do recall that one of the um, often requested alterations to property is the installation of solar panels. And that's a very large neighborhood. I don't know. I know there are already um, solar panels on a number of right. homes that might now be incorporated in the district in this drive. How does that influence? It's, it's a good point, Alice, because for the most part, we have not let people put solar panels on the front of homes. Okay, that are exposed to the streets. Okay, we've had I know one occasion where we have told the homeowner they couldn't do it. Okay, we've had others where we've allowed it to happen. Okay, you know, one on one in the street that is that you can see, but it is set way back. Okay. Um, you know, Jack Carver, his house, mm -hmm. um, he put some on. Okay, and they're sort of visible, but they're not in your face visible yet. And certainly solar panels that are already on the home would be grandfathered. You know, anything that's already been done is you know. I, I also think, Alice, if solar panels, I'm sorry, I need to interrupt you, are going to move forward in a little bit better fashion. I think, you know, they're evolving, and I don't think they're going to be quite as ugly as the same thing in the past. I think, you know, they're making great advances with that. We had one um, where an architect wanted to put solar panels on um, the garage, and they were actually going to look like shingles. And we had the, the folks from Concord Academy did a thing, and if you saw it about um, you know, uh, historic district environmentally friendly thing. Okay, I'm not turning that right. But, you know, they, and they put this whole presentation together, a classroom, and they talked about how Tesla is developing these shingles, which will be solar panels, but will look like shingles. They have them already. They have them yeah. So they have I think, I think they're going to make advances where they won't be as ugly as so um, one of the questions I was going to ask is um, the houses that are indicated on the slide here, does that represent every structure in that area? Yes, it does. Okay. There's 51 listed, is that? Is that what you think? Yeah, I didn't count it yet. So. Yeah. Well, you can see it's all of those. And are, are there any, um, I doubt it, but are there any vacant uh, buildable lots in there? Yes, yeah, there's one. 
Yeah, there was a demolition. Yeah, Devon's, Devon's 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 Road, but yeah. you can see it's the one that's got all the costs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this looks like they're looking at your list from 50 homes that would be expanded into the district. And all together in the district, how is that? But the road district is now, I mean, the uh, Hubbard Main, Street. Main Street? Hubbard? Well, yeah, Hubbard. Uh, is that the same district? The no, Street no, 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 different district. Dif different district. So Barrett's no farm district. There's the Monument Street district. Okay. There's the American Mile district. There's okay. the Main Street district. Okay. I should know that. There, there is the Church Street district, which is just about a couple of buildings over there, and then there is the Hubbard Street. Okay. So this would be in addition to the Main Street. To the Main Street. But it would be in addition. We're not going to establish a new district. And I'm told that it's easier for us. The law is such that it's easier for us to expand the district than it is to establish a new district. Okay. To walk okay. Any other thoughts other than our verbiage? I know we did get a letter, and I see she's here, so I'm sure that the, the public will right. have a comment on this. Right. Uh, my only comment I've had so many people didn't realize they were living in somebody else's home. But the name <laughs> of everybody's uh, house I thought was interesting. But. Well, I think uh, I think even if even if you were not favoring this, I, uh, I think it would be a wise thing to do to go forward with the plan that you've articulated right. and have have the input from the folks in the neighborhood and have the public have a chance to weigh in. So, if you're asking our view <coughs> about that, I think I would certainly support Thank you. that. Yeah. And then see what, see what kind of information we get back. Right. I also like it in the sense of, you know, not like I've seen before, uh, and I'm not going to be able to give you good information, but sort of defining a house all of a sudden as part of the historic district. And I've seen that a couple of times over the last <coughs> right. few years. I, I, that's a little I, I agree. tricky I, for I, me. I, I I'd I'm much rather have agree. some yeah. understanding right. of what constitutes a historic district, get it well defined, and you know, take it to the public and find out if they're interested in that. I don't know what's the process for having municipal building included. I think they asked the select board if you want to have it included. <laughs> which um, you did with the Harvey Wheeler Community Center, so the, right. the church street lot, um, the, the library trustees did not want the, uh, the West Concord Branch Library included in its not. So, and that was going to be my question, is that practice, I think, has been to um, require the, the property owners to volunteer to be included. Is that, is that my correct? Well, what it was done in, in 62, you know, before I was involved in it, when it was first started, that really was the definition of it, okay? And only those people that said, I agree to be in it, were put into it. And I don't know if it was done because they didn't want to fight, you know, they wanted to go through. I suspect that's more than anything. Like the gray house over in Hubbardsville, that was not included at that point in time because the owners didn't want to be part of it. So, but I hate the idea of, you know, if you talk about picking lots and saying, okay, you know, 69 Sudbury Road's in, but 73 isn't or something like that. So let's wait and see what happens. Just move on. So what do you mean in terms of the number of new homes being proposed for the district? Is, do you need some number of them to approve for the district to be expanded, or do you? No, what we need is for the um, a town meeting or the town, the voting public, to say by two thirds majority that they want to incorporate this in the historic district. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a, the, I thought there was some decision. I'm recalling just a recent meeting in Gloucester when there's a new historic district being proposed. And it requires 51% of the owners of the property to choose to be in the district for the district to be, the district to create, not to expand right. the yeah. district. Right. So there's no requirement like that in. I, not that I'm aware of, but I guess we'll find out pretty quickly as the process goes along. Okay. So, yeah. But obviously, if we have a majority of the homeowners uh, favor this, it will certainly make it more compelling for town meeting in April when we bring it before the town to vote. Mm -hmm. 
And that's really up to us to articulate our position so mm -hmm. that the homeowners see some value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought both the letter and the frequently asked questions Those were excellent. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. education. That's Heather's job. And we should have really to sign about Harrison. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Would it change the condition of the lease on the condo? Would it put another written something? I do want to ask the opinion of the, the lessee, who are the folks that we re you require under the lease, then to make any necessary repairs to this building. We probably have to change that. But they, could they be interim? Would you say that you're not part of our purview? They're, we're, they, we, uh, Emerson Umbrella leases the building from the town for a dollar, and they're expected to make all capital oh, okay. improvements, so okay. exterior, interior, and so on. And they're in the process of expansion now. Mm -hmm. right. I think the process is laid out in the yeah. new one. The solicit okay. feedback and input. It's just having the survey monkey with the tools to use. Thank you. Makes it easy to get input. How, is, how well attended was your session was it last week at the HQ3? Did you have a public session on your proposal? That was, that was just a discussion. Oh, so just a discussion. Not, we, we will okay. vote on it if our meeting on next Thursday. Oh, okay. The commission at that point will endorse it. It will be official, and then after that, it will be charged. I know there is somebody who wants to make a comment, so yeah. thank you very much. You, you want to read that letter? I think we've got the person. Oh, right. She's here, I think we can just hear directly. If she, if she, yeah, she can come, come up and then if you all can, yes, thank you. Thank you. You can sit there. One general concept to add, um, uh, which is um, this is not uh, only an issue that concerns the owners of these properties. Therefore, uh, we need, I would like to, you to consider in the, even in the initial process uh, not to limit questionnaires and uh, consultations to the owners of the properties alone. Um, I can imagine that some of them would like the idea and others wouldn't for the various reasons already discussed. But uh, when we declare a certain neighborhood historic district that, in, that affects the rest of Concord in terms of where certain projects and proposals end up happening, like, uh, like you know, in the recent Lawrence plan, this is in my letter, um, um, there is that uh, some encouragement for multi-family to be or multi-development projects for town center as well as nearby areas if they put it into nearby areas where we have natural resources and actually our own historical um, as such as World War II veterans housing. Um, or, or recently there was discussion about cell phone towers or even parking meters. So there, a lot of the issues that protect the historic districts end up affecting the rest of the town. So um, on the other hand, of course, having a nice historic district helps all of the town. So, so just, just, I was just going to ask you to please involve all of the public, not only the public owners. All of the public would be involved at town meeting. To go to town yes, meeting. I, I understand, yeah. but as, as the gentleman noted, once the property owners, 51% or whatever, say yes, there is extra pressure uh, to push it through, through. And it would be good to have people like me have a chance to speak up. Not everyone is necessarily following in the summer, you know, the agenda or whatever. It's, I think there should be an article in the pocket journal. I think there should be. Uh, you know, a wildly publicized public discussions about what in the initial stages before it goes to town meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I think what we're hearing in that comment is that whatever decisions are made in one place has a ripple effect elsewhere in the community. And I think that's that's a thing that you're speaking to. Jean, would you like to come forward? Hi, Dean Walter, 1832 Main Street. I just have a, a 
keep a simple question. Is this an all or nothing kind of thing? So if you had people who live on Belknap Street and Middle Street and Academy Lane say, oh, we're wildly in, in favor of this, and the people on Sudbury Road were sort of like, no, only one or two wanted it, would you be part of this? I, I don't think we... Just a question. Uh, I don't think we've gotten to that point. Okay. We, 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 but we, you we, could. We could. You could absolutely. redefine yeah. Yeah. where you go to town right. meeting. It, but it depends upon what the, we have to get two thirds regarding town meeting for anything that we do. So, okay. Anybody else like to make a comment? A question? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for bringing it to our attention and yeah. bringing it early so that public can. <laughs> be aware of what potentially is uh, in the process. So, thank you. Uh, we are now the uh, public-private partnership discussion. And we have um, been provided in our documents um, the Proposal that was uh, voted on, adopted on July 10th of 2017. Uh, and we also have the um, report of the um, uh, public private P3 committee. Um, and I think we're really, um, I guess, at the stage of uh, trying to decide uh, certain things need to be accomplished by the town manager in terms of uh, listing and notifying, and so that I think is in the process of, of getting done. Uh, and then the other, uh, as far as we know, there are no, uh, as of this year, no new P3s that will meet the um, uh, criteria. Is anybody else aware of any that? Um, so no, there's no land purchase that would not be counted as betrayed. Not a partnership, I don't think, wouldn't want to purchase one of the appropriate gifts, but the group one. Well, one of these is, you know, it goes a little beyond, you know, to make sure the list is there, it's creating a website. Yeah. You know, having a, yes. a public presence that yeah. people can go and look at. And be able to track, um, you know, what's, what's new, what's yeah. old. Have we kept up with the, the ones that we currently have? So that's a little bit more involved. I know. Is that something that Aaron does? He does websites. Yeah, Aaron is the website. So um, and different uh, staff members of so Public Works, Hannah Trout of Public Works, is able to update their pages. We just have to you know, the updated page, and she's still. But as far as ongoing P3s, Aaron would be the, yes. the contact person. Um, for the website or for tracking the progress on any P3? Just for posting whatever posting. needs to so go. Just to, you don't have a designated staff member. Okay. And what would be your proposal in terms of um, sort of how that would work and the timing of the getting? So, as you know, there's two things that I haven't made much progress on. One is the 22 29 Main Street uh, grant uh, offer from the EPA to pull up on that, and the one is going to be in the summer. Uh, yeah. Excuse other than getting the license and all that. So, um, in my, I guess my proposal would be I, I would think that within four to six weeks I'd be able to come into compliance, uh, but it has to get to the Yeah, so I would get special town meeting. Yeah. We have. Uh, a lot of things going on. I know you've been putting together uh, the town manager's um, job description. There's, there's a lot. So, uh, I offer no excuse. It's not something that I consider unimportant. The same with 2229. Yeah. That means probably frustrated. But mentioned that any progress in the last few months and expected to do so over a quiet summer. <laughs> so I'm wondering whether, you know, we have talked briefly. Um, we brought it up in two different meetings. Whether we could help you to, if the P3 committee were reconstituted to do some of the legwork. Is that, if, if you feel like the work that's in here um, is something that a committee could help you achieve if the committee members are willing, which I think we heard they might be, 
um, helping with the design of a website and offering recommendations for what goes on the website. Um, maybe <coughs> drafting, maybe it was already in this on the report, what an MOU might include as the, the guidelines of what should go into the MOU of any new MOU. Is that something we should even consider? So yeah, I think if the committee wants to offer um, uh, you know, information like that or identify things that are particular concerns, because some um, public private partnerships are quiet and um, inert, uh, and then they can come alive uh, from time to time, such as the Rotary Club, where they make a donation and they're involved in a specific project and they go away for a period of time. Um, so if the committee has particular things that like, they want to be sure the public has access to, um, I would welcome input and support from that. Otherwise, I would just you know, go through the things that I think are important based on what I'm saying. It seems to me that the one that is, that is likely to um, be active is the, uh, the library. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And there's quite a few different aspects to that in terms of archives and, and other assets. Um, and I guess the question then is a reconstituted committee um, the best way to go, or should we wait until there's kind of a point when we need to sort of get people who have a particular um, you know, expertise in uh, library management, library construction? Uh, and then we do have uh, the issue as well of the proposal of the building um, committee that um, I think we're still waiting to receive um, information on from the finance committee that was suggested. Uh, and I, I guess what I'm concerned about is that I don't want to have too many hurdles for uh, any project that is, is taking place. Um, I, I don't want kind of a bureaucracy to get built up but I do think that um, the committee did a lot of work. Appendix A does have the kind of proper context, uh, content for a memorandum of understanding, and it's pretty well laid out. Um, and whether they are the, the proper group to execute that or to ensure that uh, that's kind of complied with, or... Um, uh, also, I got some stuff town manager to be to be in touch with the chair of the P3 committee if he thinks that would be helpful and constructive. You know. The committee has been disbanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so they can't well, there is no calling. But we don't, we, don't, do we need to reconstitute it in order to suggest it? So I could be in touch with the former members and, okay. and ask if they want to. Yeah, it means the chair or something. Um, you know, I think I want to wait until Chris has gotten into this enough to know where he's going to need some assistance or isn't going to need it. I know the issue that's still um, supportive as I am of this still is bothersome to me is the list of public-private partnerships. And I went through it again over the weekend to try to get ready for the next meeting for the life of me. I couldn't remember why some of these you know, organizations that are on the list were there. Um, so I'd like us to you know, back to that. Um, and I think, you know, even if there are some on there, as you indicated, Chris, that are, are dormant, I mean, get started with this. We ought to pick off, you know, the big and important ones that are uh, complicated enough and challenges for us and we want to make sure we have it. Of course, I'd rather have the top, you know, 50, I don't know what that number is, but the top 15 that you squared away and review and make sure they're in compliance with what we have recommended than, you know, to worry about something that's, you know, not doing anything and could be put off. So We do have three members of the um, previous committee who are here. I don't know if uh, as a group or sing individually, you'd like to address uh, the board on this? Um, 
the gene is called, that's your genes coming out. She's come any number of times to kind of tell us. Get on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't uh, you know if the town manager, I'm not yourself, but the town manager needs some help. I would just suggest you be in contact with the former chair. Um, I'm assuming the former chair is willing. I, I would be willing to help. I will say that there are former members who who likely are not interested. There are some who probably would be interested, but I think that anyone who, who is interested would be looking for some clarity around what is it that that's being asked um, so that, that people have a sense of whether they're able to deliver on that. And, um, and, you know, in a sense of is that you, you're talking about it being sort of a pop-up committee here and there, that feels a little loose to me. Like, is it or isn't it? And, and, or is it a short-term committee to get things rolling and then it gets turned over to the city? So I think there are some questions that people will have in order to be able to say, yeah, I'll, I'll sign on for that again. The committee did do a significant amount of work to, to get things where, where they got to. And I think for most of the members, if not all the members, that, that we've been a little disappointed. Yeah. It's taken a while and, you know, so here we are now a year later or a year and a half later, depending on when you find the clock starting. So um, I'd say, you know, Certainly, if you want to be in touch with me, Chris, I'm happy to be in touch with the members and the former members and see who might be interested. But we would like certainly some clarity about what, what it is you or the select board would be looking to us to, um, to be able to do. The pop-up is pretty easy to understand. I think Chris gave a good example of it. The Rotary Club is not a public-private partnership. No. But every once in a while, I think the conference bell, mm -hmm. right? And all of a sudden we have one. Right. Uh, so that's what he meant by pop-up. They're, they're circumstantially public-private partnerships, not all the time. So, you know, contrast that with the library, which is a sign up. Right. So I think we'd want to get those things squared away mm -hmm. and work on those big ones. And then as we sort of learn how to do this and then we can unfold you know, the, the Yeah, and, and I realized that list that, that was part of our report was pretty extensive because we tried to be as thorough as Absolutely. we possibly can and it's possible that there might even still be a couple out there that we, we didn't uncover. I think there but probably are and are likely, on my view, there are some on that list that I don't know what well, for, for all of those entities, we did have a reason why we put them on the list. I said so, I couldn't remember. Right. Not that yeah. you didn't have a good, <laughs> not that you didn't have a good right. reason. Well, I also know that um, the committee felt that uh, it, jurisdiction did not go so far as the school uh, committee or school Correct. building. And there was kind of uh, thinking that perhaps um, there could be um, the school itself could take on the similar type of a process and perhaps use the uh, uh, P3 committee. And it strikes me that from what I understand, one of the um, uh, likely scenarios in the future is that there's going to be a middle school uh, that construction, <coughs> which has implications for the P3. So uh, I don't know what the status of that, whether we fortunately, one of our members was able to infiltrate the school committee and uh, <laughs> uh, is here, so I'm sure uh, we'll have a, 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 a voice there. But uh, I, I think one of the things that we kind of did not see, as the, the committee did not see, is that um, the, these type of uh, entities, the P3s, come and go, and they kind of, at some point, they take a great deal of time and input and in getting the memorandum of understanding. At other times, there may be a, a, quite a lull. And so the question is, 
uh, sort of what's the best process to have uh, so that when something comes up, um, we can address it in the fashion that P3 was recommending, but uh, you don't want to have a committee that sort of doesn't meet for two years. So. Sure, sure. I see we have another committee member who has a... Before Dory's yeah. stuff, so you believe that within four to six weeks you could have something... An update. Uh, an update. What's required on the, uh, on the annual report to, to update things. And what, what are the currently active I wouldn't post up there. We have we have the original report, which includes a comprehensive list, and I would only uh, post the uh, things that are active. There. So and I see that the uh, Harrington House tenant is on here. We do we will have a new tenant. I don't think that's a P three. It certainly isn't one that I would report on in great detail because we have a tenant. And within the same time period, would you be able to come back to the board with specific concerns, issues, or questions that? Are not resolved, so that so that we would then be able to sort of take up the idea of what well, we just call Gene, or, or do we reconstitute, give some order of magnitude yeah. of what we're dealing with, and know whether it's just kind of having the citizen help out, or whether it's sufficiently big to be able to get a small group back together and put them to work within that same time period. Or are you left? Yeah, my, my only thing is to say is I, I don't view what we were recommending as just some sort of bookkeeping thing. It's just going to get set up and we'll find us just one more thing. And one o'clock would be the visitor center that we're going to have more long expensive to the house. Um, that's one, it's public information. But the, I think one of the motivating forces, as I read it in the town governance study committee, was to have this public. Um, to get public information that when something is being contemplated as, as, a, as a partnership is either going to be started or expanded, that there be public notice for that, rather than having it sort of happen and, oh, by the way, this, well, but we have some meetings on this. We, we feel, I, I think I'm speaking for the committee, that we wanted to have more daylight on, on what was going on with public-private partnerships. Some of them are innocuous, um, and some of them, as you say, are, are run by the wayside. And I think Mike is perfectly correct. But there are some major ones that it, it just there needs to be. It's not just oh, we're going to keep a record of what you've done, but we want to have public involvement. When I'm thinking I'm a part of this partnership, I'm the private part, um, and I have envisions of doing something. To have it that there is sufficient public notice. And so I'm concerned about having a committee be doing this. If a committee was just going to be sort of sick, you know, just clerical, that would be one thing. But I think there's more to this, and that's the part I'm just looking to have forgotten. And that's the part that I would hope that you as a board would make a decision. Do you want that public, that kind of thing, information? Or is that something that's just you're saying, well, let's just not bother with that? I think until that's clarified, we can make all the lists we want. Well, I think on. we do, Dory, and I think, you know, if I go back to, I think it was before the committee was constituted, although it could have been at the same time. We had the library, Emerson Umbrella, and the Concord Museum all come here to tell us what their plans were and how they were going to go about their business. And I think for Emerson Umbrella, we invited them back a second time or recommendation or something like that. That was, I think, exactly what you were talking about. Yes. Whether it was enough, well, I think maybe. But I think that was exactly yeah, from the from the town governance study committee. Yes. Trying to get to the public earlier in these processes yes. as exactly. people were feeling like what. That's exactly yeah, right. right. And that's it's right. already started to be built. And, and, that's, and I think the playing fields were one of the motivating forces behind uh, town uh, government. Yes, Franklin and, and Junction Village was also a factor. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that came was, late in the game. I yeah, think, that, came, uh, that came late. But, no, but I, I think the, right play, the, the playing fields. And of course, the reality is that was at the high school, so this would have not had that's any right. But the middle school will probably have the same thing. And so that would be when the middle school. I mean, we're talking about this, we're already starting to pay our taxes right yeah. now in advance, but that's no idea. <laughs> but um, when, if that happens, that's under the town, that's 
uh, and that might be a really good one as an opening sort of thing to do. Not just a book, you know, well, there's a technizing middle school playing for this. Uh, but but again, you know, I, I know I'm being in trouble here, but I don't see building the middle school as a public private partnership. No, no, no. no I'm fields. talking about the playing fields. The playing fields that the private going. money for playing fields. If. Yeah. If that happens. Well, maybe it won't. That well, happen? that's the point. I don't want us to get No, let's, let's not forget I said this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to have something born and have to blame We haven't even decided that it's going to be a new middle school. No, I, I think also the committee sort of recommended one way to, to help this happen, which is the, the at least annual public meeting where these PPs are reviewed and the status is, is, is shared with the public. And that, that was something that the committee recommended. That was something that you all put into to your plans for P3. So that's a, a one way, not the only way, but that's one way that that can happen. If something comes up in between, then there needs to be another mechanism to get that information out. Yeah, I'm sorry if I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I get, I get why it could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it could turn out to be a public private partner. I just don't want to get ahead of the game. Linda, did you have a question? Um, I was just going to comment that having read all the material um, myself, um, I think I'd like to give the town manager a chance to work with it because sometimes when you're working, you develop a framework as you go through these, mm -hmm. and he's in a good position to do that. Okay. So. Okay. That was my comment. Okay, so Chris will talk in the next few weeks. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next the item, which is finalizing the special town meeting warrants, uh, which have been provided. Um, so, yeah, we had a, um, a meeting with uh, the chair, the town moderator, Carmen came back uh, for that specific purpose, the town council, the finance director. Uh, to review um, the draft warrant that the board approved earlier. And we did find make some significant changes, so I thought it would be beneficial to have the board uh, review. Um, I think on the eminent domain taking, the explanatory box was not self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, the moderator made that very clear. Uh, particularly, it wasn't clear to her that uh, what was happening was uh, we had one appropriation, we paid less than that amount for, for the land, and now we're paying more than that amount uh, and we're requesting additional funds. So I think that the box there is more clear than uh, the, the document that you saw earlier. We've added maps. I don't think you saw those, uh, the maps in the earlier version, I'm sure. Um, we suggested that the map show the, because we're uh, on article uh, two concerning the easement uh, for, on the WR Graceland, that the easement is shown, a little hard to read there, but uh, it's the dark, um, mm -hmm. it connects to the Acton land, and we suggested that we show the Acton land so that the uh, voters could see exactly what's happening connecting Mount Trail with the, the Acton land. Um, so that, that was an improvement. Um, let me see, the, on the, we made significant changes at this the request of the White Pond Associates on Article 4, particularly that, um, that they reconfigured the planning board recently uh, approved an AMR, approved not required subdivision plan of the 18.1 acres, and they reconfigured the lot so that the references uh, have been, the references to the assessor's process have been deleted and the references to the street addresses have been deleted. And what remains is the, um, the parts of the lots A1, B2, C, and also X. We have left off X, which is the small uh, triangular shaped lot down mm -hmm. by the water's edge. That's uh, parcel X. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that was caught. Um, so and the zip, we added a little bit more detail on the white pond, what, as well as the white pond um, gift. Uh, let me see. We contemplated not uh, having Article Five, but we received word uh, late today that it does look like it would be necessary to include um, Article Five in the new warrant, uh, which is an appropriation of funds to manage the beach. Else. Um, the, it, it was requested um, by the moderator, I think, uh, for clarification purposes for both the two regional high school articles that in the box uh, it be clear the last sentence that the debt issued under this article has not been excluded under the provision of uh, Prop 
opposition to that. So uh, the high school uh, the high school construction project was a dead uh, there was a dead exclusion. There was no uh, dead exclusion for proposal. For proposal, yes. Uh, not anything proposed. Um, The Black Birch, um, I'm sorry, Article 12, skipping ahead, we, we had substantial conversation on uh, Article 12, which is the Black Birch 2 uh, site development. So the title has changed, become a little bit, they've never heard maybe unit order units or what have you, and uh, the, uh, the text of the, um, of the documents on the articles has also changed. And the explanatory box has been expanded to write uh, more explanation. So those are the those are the major changes that have been uh, discussed and are now proposed since we last saw the one. Can I just ask one question? It's it really education for me, I'm sure. Um, on the Black Birch um, Article 12, it refers to conditions established by the Board of Appeals and approved by the Select Board. And I was wondering why. So the pro that project was um, approved. Uh, a special permit granted um, by the Board of Appeals uh, under a 40 week process. I believe. No, well, it's a no, it's a, this is a special process. We need to do that. Uh, That's right. Through. But the Board of Appeals was the permitting management body. Um, and now the proposal is to change that uh, decision of the Board of Appeals and allow either the unions or uh, financial compensation. And so that has to be uh, approved. That by them. Thank you. Any other questions? Or? So you're requesting for a motion? Or? Yes. <laughs> I would request, respectfully request the board vote to um, approve the uh, October 1st special town meeting warrant with 13 articles uh, substantially as submitted. Uh, again, leaving the chair, the town council, and town manager the flexibility to make minor changes. And it's headed to the printer tomorrow. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We are ready for the Peg Access television update. And uh, we have a <coughs> document there. So Kate Hodges, the assistant town manager, prepared a memo for the board. Um, so no longer uh, looking backward relative to CCTV, but looking forward to uh, Minuteman Media Network, MMN is the new, will be the new name of the in-house operation. Uh, and uh, what she has indicated, she has spoken with, I think, with all three of the remaining uh, CCTV staff and discussed continuing their employment. Um, I think uh, job offers have been made to two employees that were interested and in one a third, the third is thinking it over, mulling it over, I believe. They've all agreed to cooperate with the town in, in transition during this last month of CCTV's contract. Um, and you can see job descriptions, so this, these employees will conform to our uh, standard you know, process of paying classification system. Uh, not during the interim, uh, during the transition, but eventually we're moving in the direction of having uh, those positions, including that classification system and job description and such. So for the interim. Interim period, or that just continue to be paid as as they are currently being paid. They would be town employees, um, so it, it will change a little. It will change a little bit. They will um, they will not have uh, as temporary town employees that don't have paid time off. So their hourly rate will be increased to reflect the fact that when they mm -hmm. take a day off, they won't be paid for it. Um, but they will have and benefits uh, that are not the town employees. And will they be given a job classification? If, if then, yes, at, we're working on that, but that will take some time. At the end. Yes. Our, our intent would be to continue their employment after this transition. And period. it could be the case that their, their salaries could change depending yeah. upon the classification. Exactly. Is that correct? Right. That's correct. Right. And that's the purview of the personnel committee? The personnel board. Oh, personnel board. I know the storage and archive was raised, uh, and that was an issue that uh, we wanted to make sure was clarified. So we do have that. Uh, the investment was made just over in July. I think it was a run out of storage. Um, so each meeting uh, that was being recorded was not available. Um, so we bought additional storage capacity once uh, the town was informed. 
those programs. Uh, there was a request um, to the library corporation to consider uh, archiving the P programming, the public program that does not relate to uh, education or governmental meetings. Uh, and I think that the library corporation is thinking that if they, if they, they would be willing, interested in archiving the, in the publicly produced um, programs. My preference, I think, would be to keep it all together so there's one spot where people can go to for whatever program they want, but uh, that would be something that the advisory committee can well, it could be in the electronically accessed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and I don't think they'll all, everything will be available for live stream. So, that, for example, a, the town meeting in 2002, somebody's interested in reviewing a discussion on a particular article. Uh, it won't be, it, I don't think it will be available for live streaming at all times. They, would make, they may have to make a request to retrieve yeah, that sure. it will be made available. So, because otherwise, you'd be taking up a lot of space having every meeting that was ever recorded. And we'll we're, probably be we're physically storing all of this stuff ourselves on our own servers. I believe it's in the cloud. But is it? It's just ours. So we've uh, we've acquired the storage space, space but they're not. I don't think they're physically. Oh, okay. no, they're physically, are they? it's our yes. storage space as opposed to a service yes. cool. that's storing it for us. Anybody else have any questions about this? I uh, wanted to make sure that we kind of followed up because um, I know there was uh, a both concern, town taking over, and uh, the League of Women Voters raised, I think, quite properly the issue of the archiving and the storage of information. So uh, thank you and thank Kate for the very thorough. I hope you're able to even work in on the um, logo, the um, uh, Old North Bridge. All set. Um, in finalizing the town manager job description that's been provided, um, I thought it was very thorough. I don't know if people have any comments or questions about the. Uh, uh, that will be obviously useful for the um, uh, town manager search uh, committee to. Um, and should we want to vote to approve? Yeah. I think if we're supposed to, we should. Yeah, that would be, I think that would be helpful. Okay. Uh, um, um, move to approve the job description of the town manager, Jeff, um, on the 10th, 2018. Second. Any comments? So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have the town manager goal and um, uh, the uh, evaluation. And, uh, again, that was provided, and uh, I sent out quite late this afternoon uh, the proposed evaluation. So I don't know if people got that or. I did. Uh, I had a chance to review it. I made some made editorials, but nothing substantive. But you didn't get a chance to look at it. So. Okay. Um, then I think it may be something we can fairly quickly handle at the next meeting. Are there highlights that we should discuss that would be here? Um, what is, what is this? Oh, I see. You know what the highlights you might not be hearing, I don't know. Um, I think perhaps the best way, rather than trying to um, go through it, we can uh, put it off, and uh, I don't think it's going to affect uh, anything by a delay a couple weeks. Um, and I thought the goal, again, we can incorporate both of them. I also sent those out late. <laughs> they were int intended to mirror the board's goals, but to add some more specificity out of specific goals. So, what I, I didn't notice in the goals, so how can I see the goals that I didn't see? Oh, sorry. Must have yours, must have come in just before I left. Um, what I don't see in here that may be off to date is some mention of the committee to keep it. Is it in here? 
it sounds like something you're going to work on, but we have a somewhat um, urgency by some that we do that. It, it may be here, but it No, I may have accidentally intentionally um, displaced because it was under your group, the first group of effective programs. So that Okay. Ready for public comments? Okay, we've driven most of the public away. It looks uh, I don't see any public comments, so we're ready to move to the committee liaison reports. Linda, would you like to begin? Sure. Um, I attended the. Um, to do nine Main Street uh, Committee. There is a new EPA representative that's been assigned, um, Chris Smith, and he also will be handling the Grace, uh, the Grace Um They, uh, they're continuing to um, pump and clean the water, and they're seeing some results from that. Um, the, Former EPA uh, representative, uh, her name was Elaine, I don't remember her last name. Sailing, thank you. Um, suggested that um, there be a consent decree in negotiations for the statewide remediation um, are coming to a close, and she suggested there be a meeting uh, when that happens, and they're expecting sometime early fall. That's the latest. Um, you know how these dates go, but that's, that was the information there. Um, so consequently, the, the committee is concerned about, um, one, um, being able to have a seat at the table, um, as, um, the design uh, elements get, uh, rolled out, and that there would be a possibility of some, um, infrastructure being taken care of by the design, such as roads and, um, different things before we might proceed and take over the eminent domain. Um, so there, there's some benefit to us being at the table fairly early in the process. So I think the, the point of contact and what's going to happen this fall uh, may necessitate us then getting on board and moving. Um, the other committee I attended was the Concord Housing Development Corporation. They had a full agenda. Um, they talked about the community forum for the Juro land. Um, and um, they have awarded three small uh, grants for home improvement um, for people who apply for that assistance. And um, they were also... Um, had some questions about the uh, status of the committee for the open space task force related to Junction Village. Remind me where we are. I was agree there would be a committee and we have some. The Junction Village open space task force, there's one person that's been appointed for that. <coughs> have a green card for anybody else? No. So this is a good time to that's ask the public if they're interested. Yeah, it's a short term committee. I think the intent is you know four to six months or something like that, just long enough to come up with a plan for the open space at Junction Village. Right. Um, I think it was suggested that some representative of different committees, you know, the appointments, or maybe that some existing committee folks could serve to help plan. Get on that so they don't fall behind on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it would make sense to have somebody from the NRC as a representative. Right. And certainly do, I'm sure you'd be involved in it. Uh, somebody from the development. We'll make the trail. So there were, yeah, um, sure. Chris's recollection is correct. I think they were specified. Uh, representatives. Well, it's a representative. We should and, and then only one citizen at large volunteered, so we need you know, one or two more. So, so, we, so we need the committee. Yes. I think we, could, we approve the committee charge. What the meetings were going to be. So Looking at them. Yeah, I have the, the charge. There are definitely <coughs> committee reps that are specified in it. I'm result. supposed to be the liaison to that, as I yeah. think I remember. Can I be charged with the responsibility of contacting the committee uh, chairs who are supposed to sure. be yeah. volunteering? Yeah. Somebody so you can 
Yeah, and we'll be committee. having the table of the ag. Uh, we will so that might be a, a time to see if we can yeah. generate yeah. some excitement. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thank you. I, uh, I attended the Pollinator uh, Health Advisory Committee. They uh, continue to make progress on their mission, and they're going to also have a table of ag givers. Um, be handing out uh, some material which I volunteered to print for them, so I would take care uh, about the kinds of plants people should have in their yards and stuff, and something about plants. So I think we can do that. We are going to have a table as well. Andrew has secured a tent for us, right? Yep. And a table. Tent and table, and I uh, will have facilities pick it up uh, Friday before the event, bring it here to the townhouse. Mm -hmm. and it's Good to go, we can bring it right across so the street. So we can just flip it over there. Yeah, I think last year the tent barely fit into someone's car and it was kind of an ordeal. So we'll have the van bring it over here, ready to go with the table. Um, you might want to bring some chairs, I guess. But we'll have a board, a uh, sandwich board, like we did last year. And also, I'm working with uh, Heather Butler to get a list that we can hand out to all those agencies where we need it. Get some green cards. Yep, and you know, with the Junction Village Open Space. Um, Task force, not the committee, but there might be a week that uh, one missing yeah. person that we could add to it too. So, okay. so I mean, just the pollinator, it's not a committee, but I met with the town clerk and the town information officer to make progress on this fall's educational program that we're going to do. And uh, we're, going, we're going to have two, one in October. I'll provide the details for the next one. I think it's October 20th. But and that's going to be uh, sort of three parts uh, from 10 to 12 p.m. In, in the townhouse. Um, it's going to be a, by Kerry is going to do a review of the updates of the open meeting and public records law. Uh, then the town moderator, Conan, is going to provide an overview summary of last year's educational program, sort of on the road to town meeting. Not the focus of that. The focus of what we did last year was both for committee people and for citizens who might be interested. This one in October is just for committees to help them understand what their responsibilities and duties are. And then third, the session that Tom is going to chair, which is sort of meeting management. So now we get that done. And then the one in November is going to be sort of helping petitioners who are interested in petitions, how they prepare to get their uh, done. And we don't have the participants, I mean, we don't have the folks who are going to exactly do it, but that's what we're going to do. So that's great. Thank you. I attended the uh, Joint School Committee meeting this morning. Um, they voted uh, to approve the Warren articles for the Carlisle Special Town Meeting. And then they also had a uh, lively discussion. Uh, there's been a candidate who wishes to uh, hold a rally at the high school. And uh, so the question is kind of policy regarding that. Uh, the school would get grant and the uh, candidate would pay for extra police and whatever detail. Uh, it would be on um, September 8th, which is the same day that the uh, uh, Ag Day. So the police would be perhaps... Uh, uh, they've got their, their big open house. Open house. Open house. Yeah. So uh, there is some details to work out, um, but uh, they basically focused on would it have any effect on the education, the feeling was no. Public safety, they felt, could um, uh, be provided, and um, the third was uh, the issue of does it set uh, uh, an improper precedent, or they want to be cautious that um, kind of what standards it would be. Um, but I think they um, uh, they had a lively discussion, and they'll I think be voting um, at their next meeting as to whether to to go ahead and approve that. That's a candidate. Public office? Yes. After the primary? Yes. Um, 
there's one where there may be yeah, there other parties. parties. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm slow, but I'm and um, there was a discussion that uh, any fundraising or whatever is illegal, so there would not be any of that. But the um, uh, proposed candidate who is uh, uh, seeking to do the rental is well aware of uh, the legal obligation. So it was, uh, and uh, it was an interesting uh, discussion. So. Um, so I attended the CSEC meeting and wanted to at least mention two things. One is that on September 15th, um, there is a, yeah, an EV event, electric vehicle event, that will be held at, uh, at Welcome Pond at the underneath the canopy, the solar canopy, where there are also electric target chargers. There, this is an opportunity for people to come look at the assortment of electric vehicles. They can go test drive them. There'll be a number of uh, representatives from car dealers um, who will be showing off their EVs. And you'll, have, you'll be able to talk to other folks who own an EV um, about what it's like to charge a Concord, where they take you put something, a charging station in at your home, and you have the opportunity to get a test drive and see what it's like on the inside of an electric vehicle. And the town is now a new owner of an electric vehicle. Um, yeah, we have a Nissan Leaf. It's 100% electric charging. Uh, there will be a charging station put in it's here at the townhouse. At the townhouse. Um, and the car is well branded. It has the, a sustainability logo. It says it's a zero emissions vehicle. The, uh, I think, I don't know about the CSEC that sponsored it. Uh, a year ago or two years ago, when we got the electric bus. Yeah. But they had an event over at Walden with the bus, and then there were all kinds of electric, everybody ran the electric cars out of there. Yep. A bunch of them bought electric cars for folks to look at. So this is a remake. This yep. is Brian Fold, who yep. brought the first yep. one, is yep. doing it again. He's enlisted a CSEC to be the support team. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of people to pull off an event, as we know from doing the, the uh, swap days. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is that a lot of progress was made this, uh, during this special auction of the Heat Smart Program which was um, trying to encourage people to move off of fossil fuels and to um, install a heat pump system. And I think they met their goal on installation. And even, they had two different kinds, ground source and air source. The ground source met its, uh, its goals. Air source fell a little short. They're going to keep on plugging um, to see if they can continue getting people to sign up to installing air source heat pumps. Um, and they changed the incentive program a little bit. They learned from the program that the amount of the incentive is less important than actually selling the concept. And so people who seem to be willing to put that in and then uh, with or without an incentive, so they may look at reducing the amount of the incentive and allow that money to be put back into CMLP's profits to spend on um, helping to defray the cost for folks who are income eligible on the small rate increase to support a green um, That's my biggest question. We now move to miscellaneous correspondence. I believe we got something regarding um, uh, APA award and vision of Concord plan uh, asking that we um, going to provide a letter of support for um, a an award of Daniel Vernon Award for Comprehensive Plan. And um, seemed to me to be a good idea, but I don't know what other people thought. So when I, uh, in general, I think it's a good idea, but when I read through um, their requirements, and sort of, uh, and also I think talking about the criteria in a general way, indirect way, um, they talked about the benefits to the citizens, and I was wondering if we're premature applying for it now as opposed to next year. That was my mind. So much of, the, much of what they this talks about is the process, right? the, the public engagement process that has gone through, how you set priorities and how you look uh, across sectors and break down some of those silos. In the thinking, and I think that maybe that's what they're more looking at is the engagement side, not the outcome, which obviously becomes a guidance that the vision concert becomes a guidance document, guidance document for us over a 10 year time frame. That I think 
when I looked at this, it looked like it was about more geared towards how we came to develop the plan and how to actually approve. Okay. Uh, I think it's a good idea, but I do have a process uh, issue. And the process issue is if we're going to vote on something, and I don't think we're going to, then I think that there ought to be a list of those to be turned on. How did you do it? How did you find the process? Correspondence. If somebody put, I doubt, I can't imagine this issue, that somebody would object to it, yeah. but I wouldn't see it on the agenda. And, uh, so in the future, I would just suggest that any time we're going to have a vote that we not do it. I think probably the problem is that this came in oh, yeah, it's this obvious. afternoon. It came in the last late, minute. So, um, after the we wouldn't have been able been to, yeah. Uh, but I, in, in principle, I think you're entirely correct. Um, should we, though, um, vote to um, authorize um, yes. a letter on my signature to um, go out? And I guess it does require a $95 fee. So uh, that comes with it as well. I'm sure I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was the clerk's job. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to authorize the chair to submit a letter of support for the Daniel Burnham Award uh, for a comprehensive plan on behalf of this award. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any further conversation regarding it? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Many nominations. Mm, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just find the right toilet paper. Um, let's see, committee nominations. I move to nominate Lucy Rossborough of 56 Elm Street to the Hugh Cargo Trust Committee, Ruth Lauer of 100 Tide Road, number 323, to the Peg Access Advisory Committee. Second. Do, oh, uh, we don't need this. No, 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 we need that. And it looks like we don't have any appointments, uh, committee appointments, but we do have appointing election officials. Uh, there is a August 27, 2018 update number two. Um, and we would. Um, Yes, the motion mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Move to a point. Election officials is listed on the town clerk's memo dated August 27th, 2018. And there are a number of officers who are, are named here. Should I read the names or not? We don't need to do that. No, second. And I won't. <laughs> second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And I guess now we would be. Um, Journeying to uh, executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining issues. Uh, I move that we adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining with the police union and not to reconvene in open session. The executive session is needed to protect strategy discussions affecting litigation on the state of that. This requires a roll call. Linda. Aye. 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 Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>